<laughs> Other stuff is Contempt. This is a 1963 French movie, like my 15th, whatever, I don't know. Uh, starring Bridget Bardot, my second one of her, and it's directed by Jean-Luc Godard, Godard, whatever. If you are familiar with French New Wave or just French cinema or the history of film in general, you know him because he's instrumental in French New Wave stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I watched this because I realized I watched a bunch of movies on the 1001 movies to watch before you die, and this one kind of jumped out at me because it's our Bridget Bardot, and I heard that she gets naked a lot in it, and I was like, well, I can see Bridget Bardot naked. I'm okay with that life choice. Uh, and yeah, it was it was interesting. She definitely does get naked a number of times. Um, at first, I thought this movie was like another meta commentary on the film industry, and I'm like, okay, I don't really want to watch another one of these. But it's actually about a marriage falling apart. Like, there's legit like a half an hour, a solid half an hour of just Bridget and her husband uh, fighting. Um, and it was, it was hard to watch um, because like, I could relate a lot to what they were saying with past relationships. Like, well, cause like, he was asking really, really straightforward questions and she was giving like the vaguest non-answers. And I'm like, what, just answer his question, be straightforward, just tell him what's wrong um but then kind of like as i more so thought about the fight after i was done with the movie i kind of realized because this movie is like the very tail end of this marriage this isn't like the first fight there's nothing really specific he did wrong here it's just kind of like the marriage is done and they're just like trying to admit to themselves that we're about to give up on this thing and how hard it is to give up on a big relationship and it's it's yeah So yeah, it was it was good. I definitely I definitely put this in the liked category, um, and it's it's one of those movies which I had to think about more before I could really you know decide where it was gonna go. Because like with a lot of movies, I can just I, like as soon as the movie starts or like a couple ways into the movie, I'm like, oh okay, this is probably gonna go into this category, like either liked or didn't like or whatever. Um, but this is one of the ones that had to like like sit and process it, which is, I like those kind of movies too. It's it's those are interesting. Um, but yeah, I don't necessarily recommend this unless you want to see Bridget Bardot's butt a bunch um or uh if you're into French movies like apparently I am but yeah all right the next movie is Remember Me this is a 2010 movie starring Robert Pattinson my fifth one of him and I'm gonna mess up her name Amelia de, de, de Revan she was um Belle in Once Upon a Time, the TV show. Yeah, she's really pretty in this. Anyway, so this movie, I've known about it since it came out. And I'm going to spoil the ending for you because that's what I knew about it too. Is that, so I thought this movie was a rom-com that took a hard twist at the end and ended in 9-11 with Robert Pattinson dying in 9-11. I'm like, well, that just sounds terrible. I'm never going to watch this. And so I wanted to watch a bad movie, so I put this one on. And I was very confused because it wasn't bad. Um, and also, it's definitely 100% not a rom-com. Um, I would describe it as it's a melodrama about grief. Like, the whole movie is just about grief and kind of how it's important to live your life and just make the most out of every single day because you just you don't know when you're going to die. You could get murdered trying to go on the subway or you could commit suicide or you could die in a national tragedy. You just don't know. Um, so just, you know, love the people in your life and live your life is the whole point of this movie. And I, and I, that's a good point. Um, I like that message. Um, and honestly, this movie was also well acted and it had really cute scenes. Robert Pattinson had a few really good scenes. There were a couple scenes where it was a little iffy, but he had some really good, like, intense scenes at parts. Um... Also, I really, they did a really good job of making this movie look like 2001, which I was really impressed with. Um, the only thing I'm not entirely sure how to feel is about the 9-11 stuff. Because I've just known about that for so long, it's had such a negative opinion of this movie. I don't know if it really does feel like whiplash, like suddenly it's 9-11, or if they did actually make it work well. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards it was a little bit of a whiplash, just because like I feel like they didn't set it up at all. Like, we don't find out where, because uh, Robert Pattinson goes to his dad's office 
We don't find out that's in the Twin Towers until literally the end of the movie, right before he dies. And so, like, it would have been nice to kind of, like, set it up a little bit, because it just kind of, it, it does feel like it comes out of nowhere, I think. Because I was trying to look out for stuff, because, you know, I, I knew about the twist. Um, but, yeah, I don't know if it was in bad taste. I think if this movie was made now, it would be better, or if it was made... If it was like based on a true story about like someone who actually did die in 9-11, then it would be different. But since it's made up, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it is a bad taste. I don't know. It's hard to, I can't, I can't, I can't tell you. I don't know. It was a good movie though. I put them on liked. And lastly is Ninja Turtles. This is a 2014 movie starring Megan Fox and Will Arnett. Uh, I decided to watch this because I was talking to Kyle, my brother, about uh, which Back to the Future movie is the best, and he said it's three, and I'm like, you're what? No, that's not right. And then I was like, all right, let's, let's have some even ground here. Let's talk about what the best TMNT movie is, assuming he was going to pick Secret of the Ooze, because that is the correct answer. Secret of the Ooze is the best TMNT movie. And he's like, no, 2014 TMNT is the best one. And I'm like, no, I haven't seen it, but I know you're wrong. But I was like, all right, let's, let's, let's hear him out. Let's give it a chance. Let's watch the movie, see what happens. And yeah, no, he was totally wrong. This movie is trash. It's kind of a misconception that it was directed by Michael Bay, but it wasn't. It was actually just produced by him, but you still feel his fingerprints all over this movie. It has the same problems that all of the Transformers movies do, except for that one, in that it focuses way too much on the human characters and nowhere near enough, near enough on the title characters. The, you know, CG characters. Um, uh, but at the same time, though, it it does, but the, the one thing it gets right is the characteristics of the title characters. Because, like, the big fault with the 90s TMNT movies is that there were two characters. There was Raphael, the, like, lone, um, angry dude who just needed to do all these emotions and stuff. And then Michelangelo, the silly guy, who just cracking jokes all the time, was really hilarious. And then Leonardo and Donatello just had no personalities whatsoever. They were just there, occasionally making jokes. But here, they are actual characters. Leonardo is the leader, and he makes decisions sometimes. And uh, then Donatello is the big nerdy tech guy. Um, and so it's nice, but like, it's not. They didn't, like, come up with these on their own. At the time, like, in the comics and in the cartoons, these characteristics were super well-defined. Like, all of the decisions that were made to make this different than the 90s TMNT were made just to go based on stuff off the TV show and comics. Like, it's nothing really that incredible. They did, like, the bare minimum. And that was, it was the one good thing they did. I'm so glad they did it. Ish. Um, except Raphael is way too roided out. Uh, Michelangelo is way too much of a pervert. Uh, Leonardo doesn't lead enough. And Donatello is way too stereotypical nerdy. Um, and also, just like, none of them really stood out at all. Like, I recognized all the actors that played them, but that's just because I'm kind of familiar with a lot of more obscure actors. It's crazy that, like, they didn't get big names to be, you know, the title characters. Instead, they had the big names be the human characters and just have them do stuff together. So like a big complaint I had is that like Will Arnett is just there to just constantly make quips and like there was one time where like it was her and Ma him and Megan Fox in a truck talking and I'm like why the hell isn't this one of the turtles? This should be the one this should be Michelangelo making jokes right now instead of Will Arnett like this makes no sense or it should be Leonardo like trying to plan stuff out and like no it's just Will Arnett making references to Arrested Development and stuff. I'm like, cool, great, thanks. I'm so glad you're here. Um, so yeah, this movie is trash. I think I put it in meh, though, because it was fine-ish. I don't know. It wasn't the worst thing ever. Yeah. It made me want to read the uh, TMNT comics, which I do really want to get into because there was a Power Rangers uh, TMNT crossover comic that happened earlier this year, and it was really, really good. Um, but to get into modern uh, TMNT comics, it starts back around 2010, I think, 
And so like there's well over a hundred issues and I'm like, oh, that's a lot of comics to buy, which I am tempted to because I do love reading comics, but that's a lot of money as well. So if anyone wants to gift me all of the team and T comics, I will gladly accept them and read them. Um, but yeah, this movie is, movie's not great, which is no surprise. Kyle is so wrong.